Little Molly. Hello, Molly. Are you a cute girl? I think you are. Are you a naughty girl? Oh, yes. Are you mischievous? Mostly. Buongiorno. Very stick here. Not been around for a while, so I thought I'd better explain. There's uh, been a few things. I've had lots of visitors. Uh, the summer has been absolutely boiling hot. Um, so it's no good going out and doing town visits when it's 40 odd degrees. That's, uh, that's not nice at all. So uh, that and the visitors and a little addition to our tribe here, which I'll show you in a minute, uh, has meant uh, all our time has been burnt off. But we do have a couple more town visits lined up. Uh, looking forward to doing them and in the next couple of weeks we'll certainly have the first of those out so stay tuned and if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do so oh and there's been something else as well hello little one <laughs> just a bit of uh, background information those of you who've been following the channel or know me will know about beth uh, beth was my first English Springer Spaniel. She was uh, black and white. She was with us for nearly 15 years, but she died fairly recently. Um, and I do miss that. I miss Beth hugely, but I also miss that English Springer Spaniel thing. Anybody who's ever had an English Springer Spaniel will know exactly what I'm talking about. They have that certain thing about them, an affection. They're uh, very attentive. They're willing, very biddable. They're just great dogs to have about the place if you've got enough space. Uh, so uh, that's the kind of background to that. I wanted that English Springer Spaniel thing back. So we went out and started looking. So this is Molly. She's uh, 14 weeks old. We've had her a couple of weeks now. She's got a final set of uh, vaccinations uh, on Monday, haven't you, Molly? Um, so she didn't seem to mind the vet or being in the car, uh, but she's uh, learning things nicely. She's got sit and retrieve and things. So a, she's a clever little dog, but English Spring Spaniels are clever little dogs. Um, even though they do have their foibles, don't they? Yeah? They can be a little bit independent minded. And uh, they can go occasionally deaf, can't they, Molly? And ignore completely what somebody's saying to them. But uh, <laughs> she'll be out and about with us and uh, enjoying the life here on the farmstead. Oh. English Springer Spaniels. They're uh, the class is HPR dogs, hunt, point and retrieve, because they'll do all three things, or at least the hunting or the working strain will. They will hunt, they will point, and they'll spring the game. They will also retrieve, but they're not in my experience, great retrievers. That's why a lot of gamekeepers will actually have a Labrador with them because uh, they, they will retrieve all day long, whereas uh, a, a lot of Springers are, are not, they get bored and they stop doing it. Certainly Beth did. She'd retrieve once, two, maybe three times and then get bored with it and not do it again. So I have no reason to believe that Molly will be there any different. But there's two distinct strains. There's also a fly buzzing around. There's two distinct strains there. The, uh, the working line, uh, which tend to be smaller. Uh, and then there's the standard or the show line, uh, the bigger dogs. Uh, and they tend to have less um, instincts so far as uh, hunting is concerned. I won't be going hunting with Molly, but we'll certainly be doing a lot of obedience work. The other thing with uh, English Springer Spaniels is they have boundless, boundless energy. Um, perhaps not a great town dog in that respect because they need to be out and about. I mean, I live out here in the country, halfway up a mountain, so we've got plenty of space and I've got plenty of time to take her out and about and burn off some of that energy. If they're locked up in a house because you're at work all day, uh, it's not a great combination, I don't think. So if you can't give them that amount of time and that amount of outdoor space, you might want to think again. But great dogs, very affectionate, very loyal, loving, uh, with a certain independent nature from time to time. But we love English Springer Spaniels, or at least I do. One good thing, of course, about puppies is they do like sleeping. And when she goes to sleep, she goes to sleep. 
And to be honest, it's a blessed relief, isn't it, Molly? Hey. We like it when she's asleep. Got some oranges coming. They're nice. The clementines haven't been too good this year. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, these oranges are all right, proper size. So uh, Christmas we'll be uh, harvesting them. Got quite a lot of them. Look good. Lemons as well. This is a lemon tree. There's lots and lots of lemons on here, I tell you. Great big ones as well. Look at that lot. Let's see. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Crikey, there's loads of them. So uh, Mrs Stick will certainly be making her limoncello this year. Looking forward to that. And plenty to go at. <laughs> Flipping absolutely covered in lemons. Which is great. Yeah, this is, uh, this is kumquat. Obviously part of the citrus family. It's, uh, blossoms have just about gone over now as you can see but the perfume from there that's one that's not quite on yet but the perfume from this is uh, is fantastic it absolutely fills the place uh, very sweet orangey orange blossom I don't know if you've uh, ever smelt that orange but orange blossom fragrance it's lovely and uh, the rest of the plants we've had a good summer really it's uh, it's been really good Winding down in the courtyard a bit now, got some of the cushions have gone away. Mrs. Uh, Stick's flowers still looking cool. But um, we're starting to break this down now and starting to put it away. Although today is a lovely day. We bought a jacuzzi. That's cool. It, uh, that's great fun, especially when it's really hot. Lawrence is hiding in the shade. She's not particularly a sunbathing dog. Is she Daisy? Eh? Huh? Daisy likes the sun, don't you? Pretending to ignore me. Little puppy? Well, she has a mixture of both, really. She just likes exploring and getting about. <laughs> and tormenting everybody else. <laughs> oh dear. There's Stella. Hello, Stella. And Grace. Hello, Grace. How are you doing? <laughs> are you posing for the camera? You're a bit of a posy girl, huh? Who's this? This is Olive. She's found a walnut and she's trying to get the nut out. And it's certain she'll do so eventually. Huh? We've also had to chop down this old cherry tree. It was causing a bit of a disturbance to the house, so... Um, we chopped it down and broke it down. Needs a bit of work on it yet, but eventually it'll... Uh, It'll go on our log burners. There's my shadow, you don't want to see that. Uh, it'll go on our log burners, but there's some mighty logs to chop up yet. Ain't there? Huh? Molly! What a good girl. <laughs> Two of my paperbacks, a children's book uh, called Poppy Sand the Green Dragon and the Mystery of the Stone Eggs, <laughs> uh, and another one, a crime mystery novel, uh, the first in the Lee Hunter Crime Files, um, called Five Murders and Counting, have been turned from paperbacks into audiobooks. So have a look on Audible or Amazon or Apple iBooks. Uh, grab yourself a copy. It all helps play, <laughs> pay for the tribe here. Um, but a big, big shout out for Chris Davis, who did the voiceover for uh, Five Murders and Counting. What a wonderful voice actor he is. Very, very talented guy indeed. So big shout out for Chris. Thank you very much for your hard work. And Arden Black, who did the voiceover for Poppy Sand the Green Dragon. Uh, but that's another reason why I just ran out of time. These things seem very simple when you start off, but it just burns up hours and hours and hours. So in the end, uh, we've had a very, or I've had a very, very busy summer, uh, and I just haven't had time to do any uh, town visits. But as I say, things are easing off a little bit now. The two paperbacks are now audio books and are available to buy. Go and buy yourself a copy. And, um, and uh, we'll be getting around to doing town visits again very, very soon. But as I say, a big shout out for Chris Davis and Arden Black, two very, very talented actors. Uh, and they, uh, they, they brought those characters to life. Absolutely fantastic. 
Mrs. Stick's done great with the flowers again. I keep saying that we're going to do the second part of um, our kind of build a new life, not build a new life, what was it, Kevin McLeod's program? Uh, grand Designs, that's right. <laughs> uh, I said we'll do a second part of our Grand Designs and show what the house is now like uh, after living here just over six years. So I've been here a while and there's been a few changes. So I'll get round to doing that, maybe in the winter when the weather's really rubbish. We'll get out and do our uh, follow-up to the original Grand Designs, our project in Italy. Cool, what a day. Shouldn't complain, of course. Um, but I thought I'd just do that, uh, a little bit of a, an update on Molly. I'll not be turning it into a doggy channel, but we will do uh, updates from time to time. People do like to see the dogs. Um, so as Molly grows up, um, and, and uh, plays a lot she's doing at the minute. <laughs> oh, Molly. Hey, a good girl. Uh, as she grows up and she starts doing her obedience work uh, and we start playing around here in Glorious Abruzzo, I'll be doing an update on her from time to time. Oh, what a day! They do say it's a dog's life, don't they, Stella? But when it's nice and warm. <laughs> uh, it could be worse. <laughs> Couldn't it, Grace? Huh? You have your breakfast, go and lie in the sun all day, have your tea a bit later on. <laughs> yeah, Florence. Oh dear, someone's got the sneezes. You all right there, Florence? Did you enjoy your breakfast this morning? <laughs> dear me. Uh, what a life. So, just thought I'd do that uh, quick update, just to uh, tell everybody where we've been and what we've been doing. We do have a couple more town visits lined up, but the weather's been really hot and we've had the visitors and of course, Molly to look after. So um, our time has been burnt up. And of course, there's the two audio books uh, or paperbacks that have now been turned down to uh, audio books. Big shout out again for Chris. Davis, what a wonderful, talented guy he is, and Arlene Black, uh, thanks very much for all your help on the production on those, uh, and your wonderful voices and interpretations of the uh, of the characters was really good. Uh, go and have a look, you know, Apple iBooks or uh, Audible, grab yourself a copy, help pay for this lot, all the puppies, <laughs> or the puppy I should say. So uh, we'll be on a town visit again soon, looking forward to that, um, and until then, this is uh, Vario Stick from Glorious Abruzzo on a beautiful, beautiful summer's day, where it feels like it, but it's in the autumn. They're saying, yeah, ciao, ciao for now.